What's up guys, it's your boy John. Today we're going to take a look at the Toyota Camry. Now this is one of the most popular cars here in the United States. So you know we gotta take another review, another peek. This is using the latest and greatest specs from the Saida. I already kind of took it out here just so I can one hand it for you guys a little bit easier. Already know that the Saida box is looking good. The Saida printed and then when you open it we have this piece that kind of went over it and then of course you had the little lid. Now this is the good foam, none of that styrofoam, good foam to protect the units. Why is it important to have good packing materials? Because look at these edges right here on the products. You definitely don't want to chip, let's say that little bracket right there. So it's very important. So the next thing is we have the harnesses. Now something a little bit new that I've been noticing is the Saida has been upping their game when it comes to packaging. Look at this. They have their own little bags. It says power cables and accessory cables. So it is labeled and it's in that Decida blue. Maybe kinda. Next package is, well, I guess it's not labeled, but this is gonna be the main harnesses that connects your Toyota into the back of the head unit. And then I see anything goodies. Oh, I see this blue piece. What's this? So I got this blue box and we have a dash cam um, that I also ordered. So if you're looking to get reverse camera, boom, we have it right here. Not sure if I'm gonna have enough time to do the reverse camera, but I'll see if I can hook it up at least. That way you guys can see the quality. Now the Camry I'm gonna be working on is my friend's Camry. You, know, you can already tell it's getting kind of dark already here in California. It's about 6 p.m. It's gonna get a little bit darker. So that's why I'm, I'm saying that I probably don't have time to do the reverse camera, but we'll see if I have enough. Real quick before we do the install, I just wanna show the Esther wallet right here. I've been using it for about two weeks now and I've been loving it. It holds all my cars, presses a button to release. It has an air tag holder. Also has some accessories. If you don't want to use an air tag, you can use this. This is basically the size of a card and you'll put that in your wallet and use your phone to find your wallet if you lose it. There's also other finishes too, like the leather. And then there's an aluminum one too, which is oh so sweet too. So yeah, shout out to Esther. All right, for the install of the Decida head unit, we are gonna need some simple, simple tools. We have a screwdriver right here. We have some kind of pry tool. You don't need this, but you can use a flathead too. But to remove some trim pieces, I have a 10 millimeter. You can use a 10 millimeter socket, of course, or yeah, you probably wanna use a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, then I have an eight mil, an extension, just sometimes it's gonna be a little bit cavernous. And in my case, I'm gonna use an impact, but you can use just a ratchet. So this is gonna be my setup. It's not too crazy in parts. Most of this stuff is your everyday kind of things. First thing you need to do is, you can remove the shift knob. You're gonna to have to remove this whole trim piece. And I know it sounds kind of frightening, but it's very easy. So to unscrew, you lefty loosey it. That bad boy comes out, so put that somewhere safe. I'm gonna put it on the passenger seat. Next thing off is you just pull for this. You just grab it and pull, and there are two clips. They're just plastic clips, so it's nothing too strong. Grab and pull, and that's gonna reveal two Phillips screws, which we will have to unscrew. So get the tool. This is a, a little small one. So I had a little more of a smaller. I like using small screwdrivers because inside that car, there's not a lot of room. Uh, these screws you definitely want to keep in a safe place. Usually I put these in a cup holder. I'm just gonna put it in a cup holder because it does have a door so maybe it won't get lost. So now you can pull this out, but you have this trim down here blocking it. So, I don't know, you see that? You see the trim piece? It's this trim piece right here, not the bottom one. 
Um, so you get this shrimp piece, and I just use my hands, but you can pry it open um, kind of slowly like this. I'll show you where the clips are at so that it makes more sense. So there you go. The clips, there's three clips up here, and then there's the two clips that kind of, you kind of put it down and it goes in. So you kind of want to start, I like starting from here. So you saw where I pulled it from around this shifter because these clips right here are a lot weaker and it's away from the spry point. So now that with that piece gone, we can go further. All right, so the next step is we, we can try to pull this out, but we're gonna have issues with this shifter. So with this shifter lever here, you're gonna see a little button right here. Now make sure your car is in, um, it's in park right now, but you need to have your parking brake engaged. And the parking brake is on the left of your brake pedal. Have that pushed down because when you shift it to into a gear, you I mean you're not you're not in park anymore. So keep that in mind too when you start your car. Sometimes other cars will detect that and they won't um, bother you with it. But yes, so you gotta have that, and we're gonna have to remove, remove this trim too. So I'm not using the plastic tool trim. I'm just using my hands. Um, you really don't need it for this car. And what I pulled was right here. There's a little gap right here, a little seam. And it's kind of hard to get in camera. But you just pull that out. Now there is wires for the cigarette lighter. But boom, look at that. All the guts exposed. I know the lighting's a little bit harsh, but uh, you know, bear with me. The clips on this right here, if you guys have a hard time, is right here. And this is where I pulled in this section right here where it's a little bit weaker. These clips aren't as strong as these yellow clips right here. So I try to pull from this one and I pulled from both sides, straight up. Okay, so now that we had that out of the way, you, can, you don't have to unplug it, you can just kind of twist it like this. And then we just have to remove this piece right here. The reason why we have to remove this piece right here, which just slide out a little bit and then you'll be able to unplug the cigarette lighter and then he also has an aux port. Both used to be very useful at the time, not so much anymore. Now these are these ports are held by clips, so the, there's little plugs on the back of them, and you just unplug them. And this is how the plugs look like and you can see there's little clips sorry there's little clips and you just squeeze it and then pull the cable out squeeze it pull the cable out and like I was saying this now reveals the two 10 millimeter bolts down here so we finally got it what holds this head unit together is two tens right here and two tens above here and that's it so all right so I don't know if you can see that but this is a real point of view so we're looking in now you'll see a 10 somewhere around here and a 10 somewhere around here so there's two of them remove those and we are done on the bottom Make sure you don't drop it Bada boom, bada beating. One more to go. Your fingers, and ta-da, that's exactly what you want. Good thing I still see it. Oh, make sure you don't lose these in the cavern. <laughs> now the top piece is a little bit more risky. I say risky because this, the Toyota trim right here, this dashboard, it's, 
there was a recall on it because it's not very good. Um, it gets kind of gooey and it kind of breaks down. So the, the plastic or whatever they use here, it, it like deforms and stuff. So when you're prying at it, try to be very careful. Um, you're gonna have to pry this open somehow without damaging your dash. So just kind of go easy at first, see how the dash takes it. So it's, it's because of Toyota and uh, the quality on their dash. This one seems good. I kind of taking it slow with my little trim tool. Yes, you can use a flathead, but um, for this part, I would definitely try to find a plastic pry tool, which is included, at least in my I doing kit. There you go. Somehow, some way, this vent stayed on it. Okay, and then let's pop this vent back in. So the way these vents work is there's little tabs and uh, push it back in. Now you guys can get a good view of that. There you go. And make sure it's clipped onto here. There you go. So yeah, we, that, I would say that's the hardest part and what was great is there was no damage to the dash. And get close up so you guys can see. It reveals two tens right there. Let's see if I can brighten it up for you guys can see. One, two. So let's remove those and we should be golden. All right, so after you remove the two bolts up top and the two bolts down below, this is where things go a little more. You have to just put some muscle into it. We call this the prey and pull. That just means be careful when you're pulling it. Nothing else is holding it besides clips. And you just pull, which I just did. Now I like to put a little microfiber towel to kind of help any like if it falls down or something like that it protects like the paint here so you just pull it down and that just reveals all the plugs now it's in an awkward angle so i am going to have to just pull it out and you guys are just going to have to do that on your own without me can really seeing it but i will pull pull one two Three. So there's three plugs on the head unit, and then now there's two more antennas on the head unit. So one, two, and then don't forget we are also messing with the AC down below. So we're gonna have to unplug the AC, which is a which is a gray plug, and voila, that's it. So let me show you guys again. There's, I know this shows four, but there was three plugs here, two antennas, and then we have the AC. Now your car might vary because this is a US model, and there's also always a lot of different kind of uh, configurations, but for my configurations, that's how it was. All right, fast forward to the present. We are in the Camry with the Decida head unit, and here is the bare bones. Now, let me talk about what you need to plug in to your Camry. This is very important, it's very simple. Now, let me try to get this stabilized so you guys can see it without me shaking so much. Okay, so the harnesses that you plug in, or the ports, it's just like Lego pieces. You have the 10-pin the ten right here, which plugs in, no problem. 
you have the six pin right here. This controls your rear audio. So imagine in these four speakers, one of it's positive, one's negative, one speaker. One of them's positive, one of them's negative. Uh, second speaker. So that's for your left and right rear audio. You don't really need to know too much about that, but I'm just saying if you're having issues and your back speakers, it's gonna be that one. This one will control your dimmer switch, this 10 pin, your front speakers, your power in your head unit. Diagnox this if you're having issues. And then this one right here should be your steering wheel controls. Look at these three wires. I know it's not filling it all away, but that's all you need to get the steering wheel controls to work. This goes into the back of the head unit. So I have three things plugged in. That's it, three things. You might ask, what's this? Why does it go to nothing? You don't need it because if your car doesn't need it, then you don't need it. They have extras because throughout the model years, Toyota does slightly change things. Now what you do need is this one right here. You see how there's a small one and there's a big one? This one is for your AM and FM radio. So you just plug that bad boy to the back of the head unit and you'll be fine. So imagine you're gonna be plugging these two things in the back for pretty much controlling everything. Now let's move on to the back of the head unit so I can elaborate a little bit more. So, oh, so this is the back of the decider or the front of the decider head unit. And you want to screw in the Wi-Fi antenna right there. That's gonna give you, uh, oops, it's in the wrong spot. So there's a 4G one. This is, this is why we do this video. And this one has a little red little cap over it. Let's put that aside. And you wanna plug that in right there. Plug and then screw it in. Bada bing, bada boom. We are good. Now get that nice and snug. That thing's under tight. And now that black plug, you plug it into the back right here, and then the AM FM radio. I'm gonna plug everything in, um, and then I'll turn it on, and we can go over the interface. Okay, so I'm the AM FM radio. We are gonna do the black wire right here. This is pretty much the main thing. And that's it. There's some loose ends, but don't worry. There's the bottom right there. That's for your climate. Now with just those two things plugged in, we're gonna have some magic happen. Let's get the keys in there. So this is gonna be the cold boot. Let me see if I can get this in a better look. Android. Now you can change this emblem or brand to a Toyota badge by going to the advanced settings. And I gotta say, this head unit right here by Decida is so bright which is exactly what you want. You want to drown out that sunlight. I like the UI by Decida again, super smooth. Let me go over the specs real quick. Whoo, this thing's quick. Now it automatically goes to um, Apple CarPlay, exactly what you want. You can hear it. It's exactly there you go. So we're skipping it right there. And it's going to the next song. Great. Some K-pop. Shout out to you, Annie, for listening to some good old K-pop. I don't even know if this is K-pop or Vietnamese, to be honest. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, I don't, I don't really listen to music. But <laughs> after that, we can... Let me just go over the accessories because everything is working the way it should, which is beautiful. USBs. We're going to put some USBs in the glove box. That way, if she needs to charge her phone or if the wireless and not working on her phone, she can directly plug it in and it'll still work. And to do that, we just plug it into the back right there. So that's USBs. Let me go over here. So if you have a subwoofer or anything like that, you can plug it into these RCA jacks. Sub, so RCA into, and also the camera in as well. Which is super cool. 
we have this is the 4G antenna microphone and uh, there's a microphone on here already which I did a test and honestly the microphone is you it just use this microphone but if you want it really close to your face you can put it right here and then talk to it that's not something I do honestly because after I did the little test and it sounds so similar I don't even bother this is for the aux which we're not going to really mess with more 4G antennas and then the SIM card which we don't really need and then more USBs can you can so I'm going to plug those in right now and then we will go over it alright so I just fish the USBs over there let's get that test fit again I have the RCA which I'm not using but I'm just want to plug in just to keep it a little organized just in case the customer wants to move with that again front camera probably not going to use it but i'm just putting that right in there and i'm going to be keeping the microphones and stuff like that um just in a box so they can just use it but you pretty much just snug it back here and it just kind of lives right here now now the one thing that will come up is what about the brackets how does it stay in now that's like um it's going to be held with just the clips which some people don't like, but the brackets just don't, the OEM brackets don't really align. And on, honestly, just like this, without like the clips in, it's on there pretty good already, just by friction of it getting sandwiched right here. That's just how it is. So we're gonna lock it in right here. And you're gonna have to pull this back out. So it's gonna be clipped in in the front, the top, and then clipped in at the bottom. And that's what's gonna really hold the head unit together. So and you see these little latches. You see that? Slides in and then you slide it left. So we got that. But make sure you plug that bad boy in. When I say plug back bo uh, bad boy in, there is an OEM wire that controls the climate control. So you wanna make sure we get some climate control action going on. And line up the clips so it clips in nicely. So this is gonna require some finesse, to be honest. Um, there you go, so it clips in. Now the color actually matches pretty nicely you can see the fitment is seven to eight out of 10. Okay, it's not perfect, but I don't even know how the OEM one looked. But the finish actually, I would say it is nine out of 10. So that might, you might be more sensitive to the, the, the color finish. All right, let's do the vent up top. Make sure when you're removing these vents that everything still kind of moves. We just have to plug that, bit, that little port up top again. And turn it off. And this again, this is where how we kind of latch it in. So you definitely want to make sure it's clipped in and latched in nicely because this actually helps hold the head unit together up the top. in a little bit more get that fitment looking good and uh, then the rest I'm gonna do to kind of dial it in all right so the head unit is installed BAM it looks amazing so we have the car play on right now but here's the main UI like I adjust the brightness because I gotta say this thing is too bright maybe that's a little bit a little bit more helpful all right, so the UI, again, super beautiful. There's Android Auto. It's, I can't believe it's connected wirelessly all the way from to my living room.
But let's go through the settings because I want to show you the specs. It's using, this is the QC M6125 model using Android 12. Kernel, MCU, IME, all that stuff. It's got two quad cores, that octa core processor right there. You got the A73, 2.0 gigahertz, I'm assuming. And then you get the Cortex A53 with the 1.8. Six gigs of RAM, come on, come on. That's just too much for a head unit. But they pack it in, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, I got the iPhone 15 Pro Max and this, this display is crispy. But I'm telling you guys, this, the, I, why, why is it so comparable? How is, the, how is the Apple's OLED display comparable to display? This IPS. Now, I'm not going to say the OLED tech is worse, but I'm saying that if you, the, the crispiness, the colors pop, the, let me see, the colors do not degrade when you look at a different off angle, off axis. Look at that. It retains the color. Look, look. It is not, it's just solid. It's seriously amazing what the, these Android head unit manufacturers are doing. Oh, it's crispy. And, oh yeah, I gotta show you this. When you turn on the headlights, woo, we got the dark mode. Right now we got it to RGB, but you could set that. Let me show you guys. Uh, let me show you guys that, how to change to that. While we're, <laughs> wow, that looks so sick at the RGB. <laughs> Could be in the car, it's LED settings right here. So let's change it to white. I'm just change it to white, keep it classy. I think these things are kind of like this green color if we want to match, but let's just keep it white because the cluster is white, which is kind of nice for 2009. Good on you, Toyota. Oh, wow, I, I, I gotta see this. Woo! Oh, that is, that's sick. But let's, let's do it in the bright mode just so you can, actually what's easier to see? Or maybe dark mode's a little bit easier to see for you guys. All right, so, we're looking at the about machines. You got all of this stuff. Stop that IP address, all that stuff is good. So there's Wi-Fi and of course there's all that goodness. But we wanna look maybe at more car settings. Enable, of course we want to enable that. Steering wheel controls, amplifier, driving settings. Let's get driving settings, watching video. I want to watch some videos while I'm driving. Just kidding, for passengers. Extra settings right here. So you can have auto sleep, brightness mode, auto, play music, reverse, all that stuff. So that's all good. Factory settings. Let's see if the 126 password is good. It is! And then you can change your car logo right here. Um, you can use a, use a custom one right here, if you like. <laughs> you can do a dancing icon. We're not gonna mess with too much of that stuff, but you can add your own logo, if you please. Oh. Amazing. So, good, good job, the Saida, for having such an amazing head unit. The UI is by far my favorite. Sometimes the UI, if you ever look at Pioneer or any of those guys, their UI is out of date. I mean, look at this background. It is straight fire. It reminds me of copy Apple, okay? Because this looks exactly like Apple, if you would ask me. And then, of course, we have Apple right here. Look at that widget right there. Boom, we are in Apple CarPlay with Maps. Got your, all your tools and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, look how punchy the colors are. Oh, amazing. If you were interested in this product, I'll leave in the links down below of this insane product. I know I'm sounding like I'm gassing it up, but seriously, this is by far one of my favorite. This looks like a 1440p display. It's like 1080p to 1440p. Like, the 1080p shrunk down to this, I can kind of see why the pixel density is just so nice. But generally, these displays have been like 480p. Sometimes they're 720p generally. Like the higher end ones are 720 but I feel like they up the notch. I don't know what, if it's resolution, color accuracies, or just whatever. Um, and it's so snappy. Smooth. Buttery smooth. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up. 
Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.